Welcome everybody, thank you for joining us here on the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. My name is Louisa Havers and I help high achievers, entrepreneurs and coaches lift the lid on life and business so that they can live at their highest value. Each episode we will bring you our favourite founders, CEOs and guest experts to share with you their insights and strategies to expand your wealth consciousness, your spiritual leadership and aligned business strategies. We know that living in alignment with your soul's mission is what fulfills you and we are here to show you how to achieve this in an energetically aligned way. If you haven't already, be sure to claim your free abundance activation in the Akashic Records. Go to louisahavers.com forward slash gift to unlock your abundance activation today. And if you'd like my support in having aligned success in life and business, then contact me at www.louisahavers.com and let's explore together if it's an aligned match. Get ready to live at your highest value and to expand into your next level of money as you elevate and receive more. You create more for others. Righty ho, let's dive into today's episode. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode. I cannot wait to introduce to you our guest today. Our guest is Barbara With is, and Barbara is an international peace activist, acclaimed author, publisher, psychic channel, and co-founder of Conflict Revolution World Peace, one person at a time, starting with self. A revolutionary way to resolve conflicts with the psyche as a pathway to world peace based on her work channeling the angels and Albert Einstein. She has authored six non-fiction books on metaphysics, teaches and trains conflict revolution in the classroom and on Zoom, and is currently on a world peace tour, calling out to the participation of the willing for a worldwide non-violent action to end the age of war, starting with self. Oh, this is just incredible. A huge welcome, Barbara. Oh, thank you so much, Joni, for having me. You're so welcome. I'm so excited for our conversation today. So I would let's go back to the beginning. <laughs> I'd love to know how did you get started in your business with what you're doing doing now? I actually began, I always say I began with music. When I was very, very young, I started playing the piano, teaching myself. I started writing music when I was 12 or 13. I left high school. I went right out on the road. I had two sets of original material, and it was the 70s. And I, all I ever wanted to be was a rock star from the time I was very young. I dreamt it. I intended it. I manifested this pathway. And Somewhere along that pathway, I was introduced to a psychic named Eunice McCoy. I was probably 16 when I had my first reading with her. We didn't even have recording devices. (laughs) (laughs) You had to bring a friend to take notes. Seriously. (laughs) Oh, the dinosaur that I am. And uh, Eunice said that she was an antenna. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't angels or uh, Einstein or anything. It was just she was picking up my higher power, whatever that was. And in that reading, in that first reading, she told me about this past life that I had led. She didn't name who I was. She just told me the conditions. You had been a famous, you'd been a famous painter. Your paintings are hanging in great halls today. Your husband was in service of the people. And I remember leaving that session like my first time of going, what does that even mean? How could I have had another body in another time that painted a picture that survived through time? And then here I am. So that began this incredibly deep inquiry. And so I was a big fan of Edgar Cayce and Jane Roberts, the early you know pioneers of this. And when I started to spontaneously automatic write It was 1987. I think I was like 33 or something. I knew what it was, but it was still shocking that it was coming out of me in this way. And when I asked, who are you? The answer was, we are sound. And because all of my whole life, I've been going into the ethers, listening for music to pull back and then translate into words and melody and rhythm, et cetera. Sure, that was my realm sound. So, but the gist of where this sound was taking me was, it was much like Eunice's reading. It was about self-love. 
Mm-hmm. It wasn't about we're going to predict predict the future for you, although they did. But it was really all about they taught me how to they they inspired me to start doing yoga. And when I was very young, I didn't know what yoga was. It's like, look at yoga. And 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 they talked about all the great, incredible success I was going to have as they didn't call it a rock star. But that's what I heard it heard it as. And that rock star direction, even though I have a lifetime uh, in the music business, did not manifest like I put everything into it in that way. And now all these years later, you know, because we think we want something right. And then Mm -hmm. to look back and go, thank God, I would not have wanted to live that life style. I probably would have killed me at that age. Uh, I had other issues, you know, in my life as well that I had to overcome. But these voices, then I started to channel. I thought, well, if Eunice can do it, let me try it. And I began channeling. And it was a self-teaching process for me. Uh, I had to learn, you know, what I thought things meant. Mm -hmm. And then what they actually turned out to mean. Like sometimes, especially if you're doing predictive work about what the future holds, and then you get this idea, oh, they said there was going to be this and this and this. And no, no. And so uh, in 1993, I had enough clientele. I wanted to start to do groups. And I couldn't find anybody in my current clientele who was interested, which I thought was very curious. But... Mm -hmm. I got a referral from a a woman named Teresa came to my door and then she sent about six of her friends. And then she sent her best friend, Kim, several months later, who was in crisis. And we started to hang out together. They came to my gigs and on our breaks, we'd talk about what this channeling was saying in there. And nobody had ever done that before. And so at the same time, we both thought, ah, group, group. So I did my first group in December 1993, and it's from that that absolutely everything has transpired in a story that should be a movie someday. It's a it's a very uh, unusual path that I've led. <laughs> so um, <laughs> we started doing groups and documenting, writing our diaries. The voices were telling me to. Uh, to document everything, leave a paper trail because people were go- are going to want to know what this is. And mm-hmm. when when we had a group and, and Kim and Teresa said, well, who are you? And so I'm thinking to myself, oh, they're sound. And I'm an antenna. And they said, you can call us angels. So that was one shift into sort of like, oh, angels. I hadn't thought maybe angels were present. Mm. And what does that mean? What does that actually mean, your angels? Because I'm an antenna. <laughs> That's all <Yes>. I know. <laughs> but, so <laughs> Kim and Teresa and I talked about it. And one of the things these angels were saying to us was that they had this revolutionary way to resolve conflict for humans to do this specific kind of inner work that they believed the byproduct will be world peace. If everybody does this inner work, and they kept stressing, the byproduct will be world peace. But we need some humans to test this on real life conflict. And so here we were, we've been brought together. Apparently, we volunteered and were chosen to come together in this way. Of course, we were all in, the three of us. It's like the psychic yeah. sorority. That's what we called ourselves. And and um, And sure enough, we had our first fight. And we actually took the transcript after a bit (laughs) and applied the process. And what happened was really, to me, the beginning of conflict revolution. It was the first baby step. It was we weren't fighting about we were fighting about spiritual concepts. Okay, we weren't fighting Mm -hmm. that you were disrespecting me or I'm not doing this. It was like you're not listening to me, you know, blah, 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 blah. And when we changed it in that moment at my at my dining room table and and immediately had different results. And the and the phrase that I read was, if you're involved in a conflict, the root of your part is within you. 
And now, today in 2024, that only makes sense. But in 1993 and 1994, with us doing, who knew, we didn't know what we were doing. We we just were (laughs) impelled to come together. And um, we had this Satori moment at the table where we all just went, (gasps) and I came back and said, you know what? Here's what I can do. And Kim came back and said, you know, Here's what I can do. And not only did that immediate action where we actually had the fight and then figured it out and then shifted and cried together and thought, this is what they're talking about. This is what they want us to do. Later that night, I had a gig and there was a bartender there who really never had wanted anything to do with me, which was fine. I don't need to be, you know, everybody's best friend. But that night, she was so kind to me. She said more to me that night than she had in two years of playing at the bar. (laughs) And I was able to put together in my head, this is what they're talking about. When we do this inner work and we create this different energy, naturally... How stuff manifests around us changes. And I could never have that impact with that woman, nor would I have wanted to, frankly. There was no reason to have to, but what, go in and say, hey, sit down. How come you don't like me? You know, you could never have it that way. So that was really the beginning practicalities of conflict revolution Mm -hmm. and how how it started to come about. So... I love the journey there. It's incredible to to see how it evolves so naturally from what you've said, you know, a real evolution in terms of the information that you were being given and, and sharing with your friends and to be able to, to come together in this way to, to make this impact and to start to to share to share this. And I just absolutely love what you're saying, being able to see on the, that sort of day-to-day level of the immediate impact of doing the inner work like when you went in and met that lady at at the bar it was just in instant and when we start to kind of think of the possibilities and the the potential when everybody is doing their 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 personal work what the scope and scale of this impact could could be you talk about, um, you know, global peace. How do you see this? Because obviously people are doing their inner work all on their own. How do you see or why do you see doing this personal work being so important on that grand global scale? That ties back then to Einstein. And maybe I can then pick up the story a bit without losing the, the question um, yeah. of how I got to Einstein. Mm. Because as uh, we published our first book, Diaries of a Psychic Sorority, and I got contacted by a tabloid, a paranormal tabloid in London. Uh, they were looking for uh, an interview with Princess Diana from beyond the grave on the one year anniversary of her passing. And even though they flew me out to New York and spent five hours with me and I did this amazing interview that I didn't even no, I could do with Princess Diana, and they didn't want it. My agent and I said, hey, maybe there's other famous dead people. Now that I know I can communicate with people who passed on who are famous, usually the dead people were visiting me and asking me to get stuff to their living. So this was different. And I made a big, long list. And frankly, Einstein was not on it. But we, we I in my head, I imagined I went to each personality and said, and some, some weren't in. Mm -hmm. And the next one in was Nicole Brown Simpson. And at that time, uh, OJ had just been found innocent, I think of her death. So, and that was an amazing interview for me to learn. I learned so much just in that. And so by the time we got to John Kennedy, he said to us, put your list away. This is not your idea. We've been working here in afterlife and we've got, we'll tell you who's, we're party of 12. We've got this message. And so when they brought Einstein up and I'll never forget the first time I channeled him, I was in New York in a, my, my manager's apartment in her bathroom and it was a thunderstorm in Manhattan. And, and I 
I channeled him. I didn't type. I, I actually had it. It was the voice of all of my readings. Wow. And it was the voice of sound. Mm-hmm. And it, it took me several years to integrate that. Mm-hmm. It wasn't just like, oh, look, I can channel Einstein. It's like, what is the implication of this? You know, I go from an antenna and okay, I'll, angels, I got that, <laughs> you know, who can yeah. <laughs> deny the angels. But you're telling me, okay, so that was the beginning of, I decided I better do a, a book just for Einstein since mm. here he was and I loved him now because this was like this finding this old friend inside me go what <laughs> so in 2005 I sat down and I did a bunch of groups and channeled I don't know what he was going to say I didn't have any expectation I didn't want any I didn't even have questions you know and long story short he delivered his unified field theory which he never did in life that include what he calls a map of human consciousness, this simple map of the three human dimensions and other things that allow us to perceive the physical world. Because there is no physical world without our human interaction with it. But the most profound for me was his scientific quantifiable definition of compassion, with a capital C, compassion, as the fifth fundamental force of the universe. It's the creative intelligence that uses the other four fundamental forces to impel the creation of the universe one step at a time. And that too is something that took me several years. I published the book in 2007. Mm-hmm. And even then I, because I'm not a scientist, I got a D in physics, I think. <laughs> and <laughs> And he's telling me that I'm supposed to go out there. Einstein is saying that the source of everything is in the center of the earth and it operates like a black hole. So in 2005, somebody who doesn't really know if that's even possible. And I'm supposed to go out there and say, yeah, I talked to Einstein. That's what he says. What if it's really so stupid that it's, I don't know. I don't even know, but I I have faith. (laughs) So... (laughs) <laughs> and uh, so when I published Imagining Einstein, I, that took me all around the world. I had an opportunity to channel live in front of about a half a million people at an event uh, with the Crimson Circle. And I got invited. I could have been still traveling. Um, but uh, in 2011, I came back home to shift directions a little. I'm an investigative reporter and I'm a water protector and, a, and an activist. So I spent a good decade, but always continuing to do the work of Einstein, always. And so it's funny when you, you opened the, the thing about my, my business, it's really been much more of a mission Mm -hmm. than it's been. Now it's shifting into where now I'm creating the actual CEO structure to be able to accommodate the, the, the business uh, that is coming. But um, so did I answer the question? You did. You did. I think it's, it's so um, inspiring to hear you talk about how um, the information can come through beyond the, beyond the, the grave for being able to, for people to be able to continue to make their, their impact and, influence their legacy and you don't have to be a scientist as you were saying I think it's beautiful that you were in fact chosen you had the vibration the energetic match to be able to 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 channel Einstein to continue to channel Einstein and what you were saying around actually the frequency you you recognize the frequency like you were coming home when you had a, a new name for you were channeling yes yeah I think it's beautiful um and so in terms of thinking about um the impact of if everybody's doing the 
the, their, their personal development work and being able to really tap into the creative force of compassion. That's the piece that I'm hearing is um, in relation to being so important for, for, for global peace. Uh, and Barbara, it really resonates with me as I was, as you were sharing that and I was really contemplating what you were, uh, what you were saying in relation to the different ways that we can be and show up with all the stuff that's going on in our heads, um, you know, I'll, I'll often talk about how can we bring in more love and lead with love so that that frequency of love is being spread through everything that we do. Uh, and so being able to, to really listen and hear the message about the creative force of compassion, re it really resonates with me. Yes, and and the the idea that why is it that we do our personal work and how does that impact the global level in Einstein's maps in the unified field theory in the map of human consciousness in conflict revolution where we work with these three human dimensions to align them to compassion we call it mm -hmm. he shows us why our personal work is so important because there's this gravitational wave that runs from the center of the earth to the surface of the earth. And then there's this lens where our physical bodies are created and project and perceive the world. Mm -hmm. And on this non-physical part of the wave that's running literally from the center of the planet to the surface of the planet, this is where the three human dimensions are. Emotion, intuition, and intellect, and then the creation. So we don't, up until now, I never thought of it. I never knew I had that incredible power of creation behind me in this map. But when we see that wh whatever the condition of this wave is, it perfectly manifests into the physical reality. Perfectly. So if it's conflicted, if there's a conflict here between intuition impelling one thing and, and intellect and ego deciding to do another, it will perfectly manifest in the lens. And it's why the system is perfect and we still have war. So yeah. every time we do our inner work where we take care of our feelings in creative, constructive ways, where we have uh, dominion over the wild horses of our intellect, and where the voice of intuition, which is really the voice of compassion, because compassion with the capital C is what we're all made of, is always impelling us to take the next step for the good of the whole, starting with us, what's best for us, meaning not, is it better to go to college or is it better to do this? Meaning, what's best for my emotion at this moment? What's best for my intuition, what's best for my intellect, if I'm going to align to compassion, we get down that minutely mm -hmm. to change. And when you do it that minutely, it radiates through everything that manifests in that lens. And so I think that is the brilliance of this work for Einstein is that he presents us with not only why conflict revolution scientifically works, but how he can be communicating with us right now, why there really is communication. It's, it's right. All, everything is on this map. And I'm so excited about it. I, I, I went to the conference, uh, the Science of Consciousness conference last April. The University of Arizona, Tucson has put on this conference for 30 years and these are hardcore, far left brain scientists <laughs> of the physics and mathematical and astrophysics and biophysics nature. And they started coming together 30 years ago to figure out the nature of consciousness. And as they learned every year, the conference morphed into, oh, suddenly here were the psychiatrists. Oh, here were the psychologists. Oh, here were the roomy poets. Here were the meditators and just this natural growth to where at the 30 year anniversary, they could invite me. I applied to to speak. I got a little tiny corner of the ability to speak, but mostly I hung Amazing. out for a, a week with all those scientists talking Einstein and coming away completely convinced after everything I've been through in my life that, of course, this is 
this is Einstein. Why, why, why me? I don't know. You know, did Barbara Walters wonder, you know, why me? Why do I get to be the one that interviews all the famous people? I suppose she did. But at this point, all I know is it's time for the world to get a bigger dose. And so my whole rest of my life is committed to this world peace tour. And <sighs> I'm on it. And here I go. So I'm coming to Thailand. <laughs> The agenda. To the toilet. Yes. Yes. Oh my goodness. The world needs this more than more than ever. And I think that people are really ready for this and will really resonate with your message because um everybody knows on on one level the benefit or and certainly what our audience of course we, we have a very spiritual audience that really recognize the 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 impact of of the inner work but really being able to uh, when we talk about this at, at a global peace level um everybody's mission is 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 contributing to this whether they've thought of it in that way where if they're helping people to to do to do their inner work um I would love to think about just to to as to explore this. We were talking about um how you're stepping into your CEO role, CEO role, um, to be able to grow your business to because the business needs those foundations, the 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 vision, the the the, the systems, the structure so that you can make that that bigger impact. Um and when we think about how the work that you're doing, so for how does learning to revolve and resolve inner conflicts um you know using your language there affect the manifestation of of someone's business what i'm finding from firsthand <laughs> is that in a nutshell conflict revolution and this work effectively addresses the intellectual stories that affect what manifests and and you know let's let we can talk about the specific intention of growing a business because that's exactly what I'm doing right now mm -hmm. but it's with everything but with the intention to grow a business there's stories in my head I am somebody who uh, the best way I can describe it is uh, last winter I dog sat my way across the UK and oh, nice. And my world peace tour, part of my world peace tour. And one of the dogs, the owner said that, you know, don't bother. She's not food motivated. She's a stray from Romania. She's not food motivated. And I, I thought, oh, come on. What dog isn't going to eat a piece of bacon if you put it in front? No. <laughs> you could put a steak on the floor. And she had no interest whatsoever. That's me and money. It's not that I don't like money. It's just that I grew up my whole formative life wanting to be a rock star had nothing mm -hmm. to do with being rich. It had to do with being probably more recognized. You know, if you're talking about the traumatic part of it needing to be filled. But but the other part of it was that I wanted to be this voice. I wanted to be this voice of inspiration. I was going to be out there entertaining the troops singing. You'll never walk alone. Well, you know, when I was nine years old with a hairbrush and. And so I was completely not money motivated to some detriment along the way. I've never had a great deal of money. Uh, and I've always been able to live. My ex-husband used to say we were on a we had a champagne life on a beer budget. And 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 along the way, I've asked Einstein on throughout my journey, mm. why is it? that I can't manifest money. Is it, I mean, I've, I've, t I've been tackling this my whole life. How come I can't? And he said, if you had money, you would not learn to manifest in the way that you want to, because you would just, for example, my dryer had broken mm -hmm. and I didn't have any, I'm just, you know, poor yeah. as a church mouse. And he said, you would go buy a dryer. Mm. And now you're going to manifest one. And I thought, oh, OK, sure enough, two days later, this guy came, he had traded out his dryers and he even he even installed it for me. For oh, free. wow. So there were there's that kind of thing that I had. But I've come to a place now where the conflict revolution is showing me 
what those messages are that are in influencing the manifestation around me. And one by one, I have to dismantle those messages, but I also have to follow my intuition and listen for what that next step is. And I'm finding that it's is kind of, it's, it's hard because there's deep emotion that come up with, you know, whatever that, why ever I'm not motivated by money. You know, I don't, yeah. I don't regret it. I have a life that was living, lived like everybody should have, I think, just motivated <laughs> by passion. But now what's motivating me is not money. It's to get the structure that I need to get this message in a bigger way. Cause that's my whole passion is to get this message. Um, and I'll, I'll pay for it. If I had the money, I, I would, it's not like I'm begging for money or even looking for partners, but I, I would just soon pay for it, pay for mm -hmm. that structure to, to grow if I'm going to be, you know, self-sufficient and, and integritous. So I'm beholding to no one but me and my intuition. So I have found great, it's funny, I was reading all your material and I thought, this is so what Conflict Revolution does. The Helix thing, it's so much, well, it's on the maps, believe me. Yeah. And it's what happens is that when I, when I allow my emotion, which is very deep, to just keep coming with love and, you know, I have my own affirmations that I put with them and then listen for intuition to tell me, then I find, oh, remember Mickey Mikeworth. She's a financial advisor, spiritual friend from the way, way back from when I started Conflict Revolution. And she turned me on to the 12-week year, which is just a book about how to do 12-week planning and getting your goals done instead of yearly planning. That's why they call it the 12. It's more sort of business oriented. And it's about execution, because we can have all this knowledge. I have everything. I've got years of content. Mm. I mean, decades of, I have more content than I can possibly know what to do. And it's always coming every week. I'm always doing more content. That's not a problem. I've got business structures. I've got the publishing structure in place. I've got the, the, you know, a little more financial mm -hmm. structure in place. I got the strike. I need the push into However, business is done these days, you know, like I said, when I started my journey, we didn't even have personal recording devices. And I've learned all this technology, but I'm to a point where there's so much technology that other people love to do and excel at mm -hmm. that I don't have to keep this mindset of, okay, now I've got to learn. No, don't do it. <laughs> exactly. So, so conflict revolution and, my, and our work is helping me just step by step, like, you know, recognize the old patterns, get, see the old thinking, do, do something about it. And, uh, I have, you were, we were talking about my meditation series that I just did. Remagnetization is just a phenomenal half hour in the afternoon. And, and I'm back, back on course, calm down, just relaxed and focused. So, yeah. And things change quickly then. For example, I got an email out of the blue, someone doing uh, sort of cold calling for an intellectual property lawyer. I thought, what a weird thing to get <laughs> out of the blue. <laughs> and it turns out he is in the, he's also in theater and music and, you know, but does a lot of intellectual property. And I've wanted to sell my, uh, my foreign rights to my books. So then stuff just starts synchronistically dropping in yeah. your lap. So <laughs> who could ask I, for more? I, and I love it when when that flow is there and you and it it really does feel magical. Like you were saying that isn't that odd that that would come in there? And it's like no, it's not odd at all. <laughs> it's divinely perfect. And being able to use when we're in that state to 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 really allow our intuition to. Um, contribute and to lead our business planning is, is is phenomenal. That's where I think people can really have those exponential leaps. Um, you know, we want all layers of our uh, consciousness to be aligned with our with our business plan. Um, 
So with the with the ways that you're working with your clients, if we're thinking about that, bringing that intuition in, because you mentioned about your 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 meditations, which um, you can check them out on your website. I listened to one this afternoon. Very, very powerful. Absolutely loved it. Um, so just wanted to, to drop a recommendation there for our, our listeners, Barbara, because it was absolutely fantastic. If we just uh, kind of bring this all together and thinking about all the things that you, you've shared, which has been amazing, is what would you say are the three tips that entrepreneurs can take away to to be able to to work with their intuition to to implement to be able to to do their part to contribute to global peace i would say on the microcosm to develop a witness to every day just get up and after you do whatever you do your ritual in the morning intend that you're going to watch yourself all day and what you're looking for is in your head the intellect what's going on there in your solar plexus the emotion what's going on there and then in the heart chakra the small impelling imperative statements of the next most advantageous step for the good of the whole what's going on there and that practice is I think it's the most powerful practice that we can do because you know, and I know, and all of your clients and all of my clients know that uh, we lie to ourselves Hmm. and and we have patterns that we don't know that we're running. So this Hmm. way you set yourself up to be able to, to at least observe. And we know that what we observe changes it. So you're starting the change. And then the other thing is that I think the most important idea is that intellect and emotion are two completely different energies. They work together to create reality. We can go into, I go into that in my seminars and such, but if you're just in the course of a day and you have a trigger where you have like anger, and then there's thoughts that get triggered by that anger that are going to tend to want to have you project. Uh, oh, it's somebody cut me off in traffic. My mother-in-law is a creep, you know, whatever. We separate those out. We we separate it out so that we deal with, just like you deal with your heart in one way, if it was ailing, you deal with your stomach in a completely different way. So with emotion, if you're triggered, if there's a lot of it, we want to capture all of it. We harvest all of it. We want the anger. We want the depression. We want, and we want it moving with our breath through our body. That's feeling. That's really feeling without thinking about it mm. or get, get, get a, get a, uh, a mantra. I used to have, I don't need to know why I'm mad. I just need to feel and breathe. Like that was all mm-hmm. I, I would say it over and over and over. So I wouldn't let that emotion fuel the thought that then becomes the reality. And then the second thing is the intellect. And what are you going to do about that? There's so many things you can do. You can meditate. But one of the things that we do is that when we're really obsessed about something, when it's in your craw and you're looking outside yourself and the intellect is so powerful, it's the imagination is there. There's just thought form being created to create the actual physical reality. It's very complicated. So try to parboil down whatever that obsessive message is, because we know it runs over and over when you wake up the next day and you're like, yeah, but she didn't say this. And what are the, 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 try to get that down to identify what are the one or two salient points of why you're emotional. Mm. She disrespected me. Uh, I had one, she gave me her work to do and then she criticized me. Simple sound bites. Then when you wake up and you get into your witness and you're going to watch, revolve your focus. Where do you not respect yourself? Where are you not, where is your intellect saying no to the voice of God of your intuition? Because that's the greatest disrespect (laughs) and conflict that there is. In fact, Einstein says that is the root of every single conflict that manifests from micro to macro, is that people do not develop an intellect it, you know the ego has a purpose we need the ego it's the one that's going to make the arm go to the ter- steering wheel and turn to the left if intuition says turn left intuition doesn't do that function mm-hmm. intellect does 
And this is part of we've been sent here to train ourselves to willingly align to love. Mm -hmm. We've been given the power not to, but (laughs) this is our training to make the choice to do this. And this is why we're here. So it's a very... It encompasses, I'm sure, theories and processes, your process, everywhere. But the way that Einstein says it and the way that we've been able to articulate it, I feel like it's like, yes, yes, yes. And then it triggers people in their own belief system. It it, it supports your own processes. It doesn't make you have to learn another one. just Mm -hmm. enhances what you already do. So I'm very excited. The world is not just ready, but willing and able right now because everybody I talk to is saying the same thing. The world needs this information. And my goal is that Einstein wins a Peace Prize, a Nobel, posthumously for his work from afterlife, proving (sighs) that there is an afterlife and how it works. I think that would just be... The bees knees. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, that's so crazy. <laughs> it is done. It is done. It is done. Papa. It is done. I think so too. I've, and I was in Oslo when Obama got the Peace Prize. Wow. So I have, I have this visceral feeling of being in the, I know where they walk from the thing. He didn't yeah. walk, of course, because he was Obama, but then there's a parade and 20,000 people on the, between the palace and the parliament. So I'm there. You're there. I love it. Oh, this is so exciting. Thank you so, so much. And I know everyone's going to be leaning in and wanting to come into your world. How, where can they find you? And also, you have an incredible uh, free gift for our community. So tell everybody all the things where they can find you and what your free gift is so that we can get people coming over to to have more of you and to be able to contribute to the, the global peace. Yes, yes. Mission. Well, Barbara with dot com b a r b a r a w i t h Barbara with who is Barbara with? Um, that's all things me. You can book a reading, and my free gift is that you can have half off a reading if you mention Joni and that you heard me on her podcast. And I also have uh, I'm having a new meditation study, an eight eight week meditation study coming up, like the ones that I've been posting. Um, And I also have a how to channel class. I'm doing some small group, six week how to channel. And we're going to cover everything. We're going to cover the unified field so everyone understands and and, uh, go through speaking and writing and byproducts and all kinds of things. So that's going on. And then synergyalliance.llc, that's the library and the publishing company. And that's like the deep deep dive into the psychic sororities over there and uh, all about conflict revolution. So they tie in together, but that's how you can find me. I'm also on Facebook, Barbara with. Oh, beautiful. Thank you so much, Barbara. It's just been an absolute joy to to have you on the show. Um, I know everyone's going to come over to your world. I highly recommend it. Come and check out Barbara and uh, make sure that you can um, also benefit from her incredibly generous free gift as well. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, Joni. Back on the show. And I will come back anytime. We have so much to talk about. We really do. We really do. And thank you to everybody who has joined us. And uh, we will see you all in the next episode. Please do share this episode with anybody that you feel would benefit. Um, Share it with everybody. Everybody needs to hear this message. And um, do come find me and Barbara on um, social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, all the things. Let us know what resonated for you in, in in the show. Until next time, sending you all lots and lots of love and compassion. Thanks for listening to the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. And if you like what you've heard and want to know more, please go to louisahavers.com. We just appreciate you so much. So thank you for listening and hanging out with us. If there's anything that we can do for you, you can email us at louisa at louisahavers.com. Let my team know if you have any ideas for shows that you'd love to hear or topics you want me to talk about. Really looking forward to hearing from you. All right, that is it for this week, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for today. Looking forward to connecting with you again. Until next time, namaste.